Thank you, Pastor. The Lord who has kept you alive will keep on keeping you alive. You have a lot to still do for the kingdom. You'll do it in Jesus' name. Everybody praise the Lord. We have come to the final night. And everything negative, final in your life. Every oppression, final in your life. And whatever you're desiring, whatever you want, tonight, final night. You carry your miracle back home and carry the presence and the power and you will carry the mountain moving energy of the lord with you as you go back home and you start the new year with new life Amen. emmanuel will go with you Amen. and those online emmanuel is mighty Amen. the moderator the pastor who just introduced me now would have died of COVID. He said himself, he had prayed the last prayer. And then I received a call that a beloved pastor who is moderated tonight was on oxygen and that he was in a critical case and as about going. I said, no, my son, he will not go like that. And I picked up the phone and I called. It was the wife that took the phone. I said, are you with your husband? She said, yes, things were terrible. But Jesus Emmanuel, he turned everything around. In your life, the Lord will turn everything around in Jesus' name. And everyone online understands as we come to this final day of the crusade of the GCK. GCK will bear fruit in your life. That's how I became healed instantaneously. And what the Lord had taken away did not come back. Affliction will not rise the second time in your life. Let's pray together, Father. We thank you because we know you are great and you are mighty. With you, all things are possible. And you've sent us here. We've gathered us, uh, we've gathered together here so that Emmanuel, God with us, will take the glory. And we'll have the final say in every life. Amen. Tonight, reach out to everyone Amen. for salvation, with healing, with deliverance, with miracle. Reach out to everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Here at the Alpha location, there, online, everywhere, we'll pray. Emmanuel will take over every life. Amen. And good, good things will happen. In the life of everyone, Amen. confirm your blessing on the life of everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. It's done. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as we come to the final event and the final message tonight. I want to remind you. We have been here both for the retreat and for the crusade. And in every message, we're spoken about Emmanuel, Emmanuel, the Son of God, Emmanuel, the Savior of the world, Emmanuel, the Sanctifier of the Church, Emmanuel, the Healer of the sick. Emmanuel, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, our power. Emmanuel, the coming king. And we have seen Emmanuel, the mighty God, the marvelous God, the merciful God, and the majestic God we are looking at tonight. Tonight, I come to you with the message, Emmanuel, 
the majestic God of glory. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, reading from verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he, Emmanuel, for he, Jesus, for he, the God of power, for he, the God of miracle, for he, the God of mercy and compassion, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. In verse 22, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, in verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. The Lord made a special thing. And what had never happened in the history of the world happened because God the Father has love for his world that he has created. And he was going to do something special, something unique, and something spectacular. So he made a virgin without any connection, intercourse with a man, to be with child. It was a supernatural, miraculous conception. Christ Jesus, everything about him is supernatural. It's miraculous. His conception miraculous supernatural his birth miraculous and supernatural his protection after he was born miraculous and supernatural his life the life that he lives spotless harmless and holy and pure and perfect supernatural and miraculous and his death for us on the cross of Calvary supernatural miraculous and when Jesus came and demanded for his body uh, the governor said is he dead already all the others were still on the cross and they were going to break their bones but his death miraculous and supernatural and then his burial on the third day he rose again and the angel the power of God came from heaven and rolled away the stone his resurrection miraculous he appeared to his own disciples for within 40 days with infallible proof and then on the 40th day Day, he was uh, talking to them all of a sudden he was being lifted up they were looking his ascension supernatural miraculous and then he's coming again the heavens the sky will open and Christ will come through that open heaven he'll come with myriads of angels in the glory and in the clouds and he will come so that he'll take the same so supernatural then there'll be time of great revelation after the church had gone in the rapture after seven years of that revelation it comes again everything about him miraculous and supernatural behold a virgin shall be your child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel if you believe he came for you shout Emmanuel They'll touch your soul, shout Emmanuel. They'll touch your body, shout Emmanuel. He will take you from this point of giving you grace and he'll take you to glory, shout Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us in the God of glory, is the Lord of glory. And he comes so that in his majestic power authoritative power irresistible power it will come into our lives it will do the impossible tonight Emmanuel is here say Emmanuel is here with me for me it will do the great incredible that nobody has ever done will do that in your life today. Emmanuel, the majestic God of 
glory. There are three things we're looking at. Look at number one. Number one, exaltation of the God of glory. The exaltation. The Father exalted him. And nobody can bring him. And what the Father exalted him to do. Nobody can cancel that in your life. He'll be exalted in your life. He'll be exalted in your family. He'll be exalted in your situation. He'll be exalted. Anything you need tonight, the Father has highly exalted the Lord Jesus Christ, the exaltation of the God of glory. Number two is the exchange of our guilt for his glory. The exchange it takes the useless thing you have and it gives you the useful thing from heaven it takes your guilt it gives you grace godliness and glory it takes the impossibility of your life and it gives you the possibilities of power the possibilities of heaven and your life is turned around my life is turned around exchange of our guilt for glory number three expectation of the greatest of glory expectation of greatest the greatest of glory and we have glory here we have glory in life and then we're expecting when it comes in glory we're expecting you're expecting where we'll go with him i will go with him he saves us here on earth that he might preserve us until his glory. He has healed us here that he might preserve us in health until we see him in glory. He has blessed us here on earth that his blessings might continue until we get to glory we have expectation i have expectation i have hope and you have expectation you have hope it'll take you to the greatest of glory amen. let the church say amen. amen look at number one number one exaltation of the god of glory exaltation of the god of glory we're talking about christ we're talking about Emmanuel and we're talking about his exaltation. Look at Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading there from verse 9. In Philippians chapter 2, we're looking at verse 9. It says, Wherefore God also has highly exalted him, Christ, has highly exalted him above angels, above all men above religious people above all the offspring of adam christ jesus emmanuel greater and higher than all men everywhere because god has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name before i explain that say amen. amen there are many names cancer that's a name ulcer that's the name brain problem madness that's the name blindness that's the name and deafness that's the name and all those infirmities that's the name and sin that's the name and all the men and women of the world they have names the evil doers they have name the sinners they have name the destroyers they have name but every name on earth every name in the sky every name in the sea every name in the ocean god has highly exalted him and given him a name above every name above your sickness he has a name higher than your sickness above your calamity he has a name higher than your calamity above every name you name on earth christ the god of glory 
the God of power he has been exalted above every name look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says that at the name of Jesus at the name of Jesus you might feel weak all you need is that name of Jesus you might feel as if you are collapsing as if you cannot take the next step he has given us the name of Jesus it, the demons might be here and they are knocking your head and tearing your mind apart but at the name of Jesus tonight Every knee shall bow. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Amen. The you know powers of darkness that stand and they stand erect and they stand firm and they threaten you and they say, as long as we are here, you are finished. Don't worry, they will bow tonight. Amen. And those who brag and they say, your future, your progress. It's in their hand. And if they don't want you to succeed, you will not succeed. That's a lie. All those people, the Lord will shut their mouth. They will bow in Jesus' name. And whatever the sickness, they say they kill that one and kill that one. That they will not kill me. I say that thing will not kill me. Because I have that exalted name of Jesus. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee of any personality against your life, everything will bow in Jesus' name. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth that means everything up here and below tonight every knee will bow yes. look at verse 11 in verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord that's what he calls you to tonight that you will understand that jesus christ becomes your lord the moment you turn away from sin and you receive him and you say lord here am i i know you died on the cross of calvary for me and here i am as you make him your lord and your savior tonight you are saved Tonight, you are forgiven. Tonight, all those yokes are broken. Remember, only a dimension of the name of Jesus, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father of God the Father. When you are saved, it's so the glory of God the Father. And we're saved by that name. We're saved in that name. We're rescued in that name. We're forgiven in that name. And when the name brings you the forgiveness, it is to the glory of the Father. We're healed at the mention of that name. Faith in his name. Through faith in his name has made this man whole, having sound, perfect health before you all is the mention of the name that brings you that healing that brings you the perfect soundness that takes away years of sickness and years of infirmity everything gone tonight yeah. everything removed tonight remember it is not how much you shout, how much you think, how much you cry, how much you roll on the ground. Look at that man at the gate, beautiful. He didn't cry. All he wanted, he was even, he didn't even know he would be healed. Maybe you don't know you'll be healed, but I want to assure you, you are going to be healed. <laughs> He didn't know that the problem paralysis from his birth. He didn't know that everything will be removed. But even though he didn't know, the miracle came. And for you, the miracle will come. 
silver and gold have I none? And your first thought, okay, if you don't have silver and gold, what are you doing before me? I want, I need silver and gold, but what I have, I give unto you. While he was still thinking, if you don't have silver, if you don't have gold, why are you standing there then? But he was given arms and legs and he rose up and now he could go and walk and get all the silver, all the gold that he needed in life for his maintenance. What you need that will give you, that will send you forth. And you will have the power, the might and the wisdom to go and earn a living. Tonight is your night. You receive in Jesus name. Because every knee shall bow. Because every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He'll be the Lord of your life. He'll be the Lord of your situation. He'll be the Lord over your problem. He'll be the Lord over the confusion of your life. He'll be the Lord over every challenge you have in life. Because you make him Lord, Lord of your life. Then he becomes Lord of your situation. He becomes the Lord of every area of your life. And then it's to the glory of God. Your life will bring glory to God. Your progress will bring glory to God. God. and your achievement in life everything you have prayed for during this retreat and during this GCK the Lord will begin to open up everything, unravel everything, you go here blessing, you go there blessing you move here blessing and your life every day, your life every moment, your life every event will bring glory unto the Lord, unto the God of heaven, our Father who is in heaven. Because that's what it was. That's why St. Jesus Christ, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you so ever that's you sitting right down there and that whosoever that's that person standing up right there that whosoever that's the person online that's the person everywhere that whosoever believes in him will not perish i'm looking at people that will not perish where are they <laughs> you will not perish in jesus name as you believe, you don't believe in idols anymore. You believe on him. You don't believe in your self-righteousness anymore, thinking what I do, what I don't do, and you know, my good shall greater than my evil, my life getting better and better. No, you don't have faith. You don't believe in self-righteousness. You believe in the Redeemer. You believe in the Savior. You believe him, that the Father at saint and he says because you believe you'll not perish you'll have everlasting life we're looking at acts chapter 5 and i'm reading from verse 30 acts chapter 5 verse 30 the god of our fathers raised up jesus who ye slew and hanged on a tree. Look at what they had done. They were responsible for the direct crucifixion of Jesus, the Son of God, of Jesus, the Savior. Yet God exalted Jesus Christ that forgiveness will come to everyone. Those people that were primarily, primarily at that time. They were the people that committed the sin of killing the Son of God, the Prince of Glory. Even those people, Christ was so exalted and he did not discriminate. Did, did, do you remember how many people were saved on the day of Pentecost when Peter said, you are responsible primarily for the death of Christ. Yet, they were forgiven. And those of us who are this far, or well, were not there when he was crucified, were not responsible for his crucifixion. Yes, our sin nailed him to the cross. We didn't see his tears. We didn't see the crown of thorns. We didn't see all his agony. And those people that were responsible primarily, they were forgiven. 
you will be forgiven. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, him as God exalted. You know, there may be people that say they don't want Jesus and they're not exalting Jesus, but who are they? Who are they? God himself has exalted him. And there may be people that say, no, I, I exalt the founder of my religion. I exalt, uh, you know, the, the people who brought my religion into a village. And they don't recognize Jesus, but who are they? God, the God of heaven. The God who has the final say. The God who planned our salvation. And the God who has told us there's no other way. This is my only begotten son. Believe. Believe him. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sin is the one that gives us repentance if you say your heart is so hard you cannot repent and you do not repent it's because you are not asking jesus my heart is hard the habit is ingrained in me and I try to repent even when I think I cry the crocodile tears I don't mean those tears but Jesus he doesn't only forgive he even gives you repentance there's a kind of repentance superficial that is not acceptable in the sight of the lord you chew what you stole in your mouth and then you say i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry all that superficial repentance not acceptable in the sight of the lord he gives you the genuine repentance he gives you the heaven sent repentance he gives you the repentance that god will accept him as god exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to israel and forgiveness of sin that's his exaltation and it's exalted for you so that the the, the broken heart you need he'll give that to you the contrite heart you need he'll give that to you the sorrow for sin that you need it will give that to you and a decision to turn away from that sin that's why the heavenly father exalted him so that he will give you that sorrow of heart that conviction for sin and that decision willingness to turn away from the sin and then he'll give you forgiveness of all your sins tonight i said tonight i said tonight will be exalted in your life in Jesus name we're coming to number two now number two we're looking at exchange of our guilt for his glory exchange of our guilt for his glory all men all have sinned and come short of the glory of God because we've sinned we have shame. Even the remembrance of those things, they bring shame. They bring regret. Why did I do that? They bring remorse in our lives. Look at what I've done. I've spoiled myself. I've spoiled my name. I've spoiled the name of a family i'm ashamed even before our religious leaders our priests our pastors our preachers i'm ashamed and and if the thing comes online if the things come in the newspaper and they have written that so and so of such and such religion church denomination look at them in the day they carry bible in the night there are other kinds of people 
They seem to sing the song of glory, but they live a life of shame. And it comes out. And yet, you know, when you have guilt like that, condemnation like that, Christ comes and he says, don't hurt yourself. Don't kill yourself. Don't allow the public shame to destroy you and send you to hell. I came to take your guilt from you so that I can give you my grace and my glory. Glory will come in your life. Grace will come into your life. And all the shame and all the guilt and all the condemnation, the Lord will remove in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10, for it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory that's what he does he brings many sons unto glory actually they were not sons they were sinners condemned guilty ashamed ashamed of themselves ashamed of their actions ashamed of their lifestyle but jesus comes he says come it's because of you I came to remove your shame, to remove your guilt. And as you believe, then you turn from being a sinner to being a son. As many as received him, to them he gave power to be, to become the sons of God. They were sinners to become the sons of God. Even them that believe on his name. And so believe on his name tonight. You are changed. You are transformed from being a sinner to being a son. Amen. Amen. You are transformed from being defiled to becoming the daughter of God. It will happen. I said it will happen because it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons, many daughters unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. To make the captain of their salvation. is a captain. is the conqueror. is the one that goes before us now. Once he gives us grace. He gives us godliness. And he's leading us unto glory. He'll be going before us. And you wake up in the morning. The spirit of God will remind you. You're saved. You're moving on to glory. And when you get to your place of work, things are now different. The things you used to do, that when they begin to look at their account, and they begin to investigate, your heart is palpitating because they're going to discover this and that. But now, your life has turned around. No shame again. And I, you know, no evil thing against you anymore. In fact, uh, before they, you know, before they discover what happened to their account, you go to them, you say, I want to make an, a confession. You say confession, your accountant, confession, your bookkeeper, confession, your a clerk, you're an office worker, yes. And we know that you're a church man, you're a church woman, yes. I'm sorry. This is what I did. In a time of temptation, I yielded, I surrendered. But now I come to right the wrong. I come to make the restitution. And God forgives you and man forgives you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You've been, I'm doing lesson, lesson, lesson for that family. And he put all their children under my care. You teach them mass, you teach them English, you teach them this, you teach them that. Before we know what's happening, the fellow is supposed to teach English, supposed to teach mathematics. He's not teaching English. 
It's teaching immorality. It's teaching pornography. It's teaching sin. And the end gets the attention of that girl. Now they're living in sin together. Teacher, teacher, teacher of evil. Teacher of immorality. And teacher of condemnation. And eventually, the daughter begins to cry. I cannot hide this. I must tell mom. I must tell dad. And before the shame comes, you come to the parents and you say now I come oh you have a lesson to no I don't have a lesson today I'm not giving extra lesson today I come to uh, confess what I've been doing the extra moral study sinfulness you kneel down you say I am sorry you must forgive me please I'm guilty then God forgives you and those the father and the mother they'll forgive you in Jesus name and then you tell that daughter, I know the dirty sin that came in your mind because of touching and touching and doing this and that. But I am sorry. I've gone to the Lord and I will not do that again. And she too will go to the Lord. She will not do that again. The shame is removed. The guilt is removed. And the glory of God and the joy of forgiveness and salvation will enter your life in Jesus name. You become a new creature in Christ. If any man, if any woman be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away we behold tell me tell me all things have become new pilfering no no more stealing no more fornication no more adultery no more and all those evil things telling lies and deceiving and covering up Nobody will know that you did this, but now you come out. You say, I'm not covering up anymore. I have the grace of God now. And then the Lord puts a conviction in you, and you confess, and you restitute. And now you're on your way to glory. The Lord will do it in your life in Jesus' name. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering he will do it in your life in john chapter 17 john chapter 17 we're reading from verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. The people who come to the Lord, and the people the Lord, the exalted Lord, makes an exchange with, and he takes their guilt, and he gives them grace and godliness and glory. It says, I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them. It says, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. All those uh, things you used to do in the night club. All those things you used to do under the dim light. All those things you used to do in the secret. Now you confess and you forsake and you have the salvation of the Lord and the Lord says now you are no more of the world. You are no more of the night club. You are no more of the secret cult. You are no more of the people, a part of the people that do those shameful things and they do those uh, graceless things no, because now life has changed. Your life will change. And when you live here after this GCK, and when you go back home, you go back to the office. No nightclub anymore in Jesus' name. You know how your life is, uh, how you hide that pornography. That every night before you sleep, uh, you must, you know, you know the site, you know where you find all the, and then you pornography, pornography, pornography. And when you sleep in the night, what are you thinking about? The last thing you looked at, you gazed at, you put your mind to before you sleep. Shame. And 
disgraceful things but now you realize you say this thing will not carry on till the new year give me a good amen, amen. you confess before the lord a shut those things and if you you know how to you know all the things of subscribe to him destroying your life making you guilty and making you feel ashamed and your mind will be saying you call yourself a christian when you come out now you'll be deeper than the deeper people and you are even you know people look at you you walk sanctimoniously it looks like you're even holier than the pastor but you know that in the secret those shameful things are there but now you come to the lord you say tonight i will settle everything i will settle everything i will settle everything look at verse 15 in verse 15 i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil when it brings you forgiveness and it brings you grace and it turns your life around it will keep you from those evil things look at verse 16 it says they are not of the world even as i'm not of the world it's the lord of glory and there are things the lord of glory will not do and when you are saved and when you are forgiven he brings you to grace and godliness and glory and what you will not do you will not do they are not of the world even as i'm not of the world look at verse 17 verse 17 sanctify them sanctify them after we're saved he also wants to so clean us up on the inside he wants to make us so righteous on the inside whether you know your wife is there or not whether your wife knows what you are looking into or not there is this cleansing in the heart you don't even want to see all those things anymore you don't want to go that direction anymore you don't want to take part in any evil or appearance of evil anymore your claims to have purged, you're purified, you're sanctified, sanctified them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. But why? Why does this sanctify? Look at verse 22. In verse 22, and the glory which thou givest me, I have given them. Exchange, exchange. It takes your guilt. It takes your dirty life. It takes your unrighteousness. It takes everything that has been bottled in the heart. Everything stored in the heart. Everything that, you know, you're praying. The devil is saying, <laughs> prayer warrior. But you know what you're doing? And the shame will stop the prayer. And you're trying to do good. I give this one this. I give one, this one that. Uh -huh. You know how to give money, but they don't know know the source of that money they don't know how you are you know doing those shameful things to have uh, the money now you confess you forsake and your life is totally different and what you are on the inside is what you are now on the outside and it says the glory which thou givest me i have given them that they may be one as we are one even as we are one look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says i in them the god of glory i in them no more shame no more guilt and thou in me and that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me he'll confirm it in your life shame will vanish away those inglorious things you've been involved with he'll forgive you tonight he'll cleanse them away from your life in jesus name you see unbelievers unbelievers they use whatever they can use to cover up and to be in secret and they do those things in secret their lives have not been changed 
The shame has not been taken away. The condemnation, the guilt has not been taken away. And they don't even have mind to be taken away. So they still live that defeated life, that defiling life, that regretful life. Because they don't have the grace and the goodness and the glory of God. But now, tonight, things will change. In your heart, things will change. They will not just be, uh, you know, like a um, shallow, superficial uh, person, but total change will come in your life. I'm waiting for a better, better amen. You know, I was surprised. I traveled out. And you have to be in transit. You are coming from that place in India and then you come to this uh, airport and then to this airport and you are checking uh, to go and enter the last plane that will bring you to the headquarters the best place on earth for me <laughs> praise the Lord as was standing in mommy and I, a man approached her and said, Is that Pastor Kumui? And mommy said, Yes, that's him. There's no duplicate. And so the man approached me and said, I'm happy to meet you. Glad to meet you. He said, I'm a businessman. I'm not of your church i'm not even of any church think about that but my business everything in shambles everything scattered and the people i employed they will steal my money until i was almost coming into ruin then he said i decided then he mentioned the name of the deeper life member he said, then I called him. I said, please, look at my work. Look at everything. It's going down. I was up there before, but now the people have wrecked and ruined everything. And the brother, deeper alive, he accepted and got to that place of work. Then he got other deeper life people he could trust. And they came into that, um, you know, into that organization. And they made everything. The man told me, now I have peace of mind my work everything is all right now i can raise my head among my colleagues because your member came into my place of work and now everything is fine glory 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 that's where you work the people will see that you exchange guilt for glory and they'll have peace of mind they'll have rest of mind they'll have joy and part of the glory you bring in your life you take to that place of work in jesus name that brother i know the name because he gave me the name you know give me his details but i can't mention his name because i'm preaching and i say brother if you are hearing my voice and your director your your employer told you what i'm telling you now i say god bless you i say the glory of god multiply your life multiply in your family and i pray that the righteousness you have as a result of hearing the word accepting the word believing the word and living by the word god will continue to bless you you've lifted up the name of jesus in that place you are walking in the lord will continue to lift you up it takes our guilt it takes our condemnation it takes our shame and it gives us glory you're looking at uh, for second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 second corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 18 but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed 
are transformed are turned around into the same image from glory to glory when you come to the lord and you give your life to the lord and you're born again and he removes guilt from you he removes condemnation from you and he forgives your sin and you stay and you abide with christ then he takes you from glory to glory glory at salvation to glory at sanctification to glory in the spirit baptism to glory eventually it will take you to heaven Amen. i'm going to heaven <laughs> not tonight but i'm going to heaven <laughs> not this year but i'm going to heaven after long life happy life holy life healthy life we will get to heaven in jesus name Amen. because he changes us from glory to glory even by the spirit of the lord and i pray that this intention of the lord and this expectation of the lord and this plan of the lord that he takes guilt away and he makes us stop everything that brings shame and guilt takes everything away and it brings us into glory it will be fulfilled in every life in jesus name we're looking at number three now number three is the expectation of the greatest of glory the expectation of the greatest of glory the lord is coming he'll come in the glory of his father he will come in the clouds of heaven and you will not see suffering anymore it's not coming back to be a substitute to suffer for a sinner it's coming with the joy of heaven with the glory of heaven it's coming in the power of the almighty and when he comes when he comes he comes in glory and then he will take you are you there are you there he will take you and take you to glory me me it'll take you to glory in jesus name we're looking at second peter chapter one and i'm reading from verse three second peter chapter one we're reading from verse three according as his divine power has given us unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness tonight he'll give you all things yeah. that pertain to life healing pertains to life he will give you salvation pertains to eternal life everlasting life he will give you freedom freedom from sin and freedom from all those slave makers the slave drivers the slave traders the people that take you against your will and pull you against your will slave trade has stopped many years ago as William Wilberforce oh my same uh, namesake William Wilberforce as he stopped the slave trade and then in America Abraham Lincoln and after the slave trade has taught there are still people that have the spirit and the heart of wanting to make slaves of their fellow man slaves of their fellow woman slave of the innocent girl and slave of the innocent boy but he gives us all things that pertain unto life freedom from slavery freedom from slavery yeah. nobody will keep you in slavery anymore in jesus name yeah. freedom from the slavery of satan from the slavery of sinners and from the slavery of those uh, people that bully on your life and they compel you to do what you don't want to do what you have consecrated committed your life that you will not do 
They're just slave makers, slave traders, slave driver, drivers. They will not take any hold in your life anymore. The people who hinder also want to hinder you from what Christ has done for you on the cross of Calvary. That the worst and the most wicked slave trader I ever learned about. But now Christ, he has come so that... He will give you all things that pertain to life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. Look at that. He has called us to glory. Look at that. He has called us to glory. He's calling you to glory tonight. Shame will vanish away. Guilt will vanish away. Called us to glory and to virtue. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Whereby are given unto us promises he has given you that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved tonight. Salvation Amen. shall be healed, healing shall be delivered deliverance shall be redeemed redemption it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye may be partakers of the divine nature the defiled nature and the nature of the devil brought us to shame brought us to inglorious things and brought us to guilt and condemnation but now there's a great exchange tonight Amen. remove your guilt remove your condemnation remove the shame that piled up in your life and now it brings you to glory because it takes away the defiled nature the defiling nature and it gives you the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust your time has come this final day of this December retreat GCK, you are going to have the glory. You are going to have the forgiveness. You are going to have the new life, the change of life. And then you go out of this place and the heaven will see glory on you. Christ will see glory on you. The angels will see glory on you. And those of us who are here, who knew what you were before, we know you have visited Calvary, and we will see glory upon your life. Amen. amen. For you there, amen. amen. And your wife will see the change, the transformation. You know, your wife has been thinking, uh, my husband never misses any Bible study, never misses any meeting in the church, never misses any of the workers, uh, you know, workers uh, meeting. They call them, she's all, almost sleeping in the church. Every day he's there, but I can't see any glory in this family. All I see is fighting and argument. And he has some kind of wisdom, and he uses that wisdom cleverly to oppress me. And he talks to all his friends, and I think he's the best of all men. But I know what I suffer at home. He knows Bible, and he uses the Bible to attack me, to suppress me, and to silence me. And you know, you know how things have been. Uh, you want to come to the Lord and say, Lord, whether I raise up my hand or not, I give my heart unto you. And I want the shame. And I want the guilt. And I want all the things I've been doing, which does not bring joy in my heart, joy in my family. I'm living with only one person, and I cannot make one person here happy at home things will change in my life and tonight it will happen in jesus name 
and the glory we we'll speak about and the glory we we'll sing about and the Emmanuel we we'll sing about will become resident in our hearts and resident in our lives and everywhere we go we carry the light of Emmanuel the enlightenment of Emmanuel and we carry the grace the godliness the glory of Emmanuel everywhere we go. Amen. Somebody there shout Amen. Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. I want you to think of yourself. I want you to think of the life you live. I want you to think about the guilt and the condemnation. And I want you to sincerely tell the Lord, Oh Lord, I know the level of my life. I know the disgraceful things my daughter knows about it. I know the shameful thing my son knows about it. And my life has so affected my sons, my daughters, my wife, or my husband too, that have silenced my husband. I know him. Anytime he wants to say, he wants to correct something, I know the look on his face. Immediately I shout him down. Is your life going to continue like that? Tell the Lord, oh Lord, here I am. It's bowed and eyes closed. And tell the Lord, oh Lord, I'm going to totally now turn around. Give myself completely unto you. Whether we use the title, backslider or not, it's not the title that matters. It's the life of shame. The life of ingratitude and the life of suppressing other people, the life of disgrace. That's what we need to get out of the way. Tell the Lord, wherever you are now, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, and say, Lord, turn my life around, change my life. We're not talking of workers or members now of the church. Work, work, work. Let the Lord walk in your heart right now. Walk in your life right now. Walk in your personality right now. And say, Lord, all the shameful things. I don't want any member of the choir going anywhere now. I want you to go back to your seat. And I want you, and we're not talking about walk, 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 please. Honor your father, obey your father, go back to your seat. Think of your life. The shame, the guilt, and the things we do will hurt many lives. I will rejoice in that. That's not glory. That's disgraceful. You have stopped talking, thinking about glory in heaven and glory when Christ will come. Self will, sinful practice are taking over your life. Tell the Lord, Lord, I come. And if you are there, you have never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender your life to the Lord now. Confess the shame. Confess the guilt. It will turn your life around. Anyone that comes to Christ and Christ gives him repentance towards life and salvation, forgiveness, there will be a definite change and there will be a turning around and the blood of Jesus were cleansed from all unrighteousness. Tell the Lord, let him take away the shameful things, the shameful habit, the shameful interaction, the fleshly interaction 
between men and women, between boys and girls. I will just mention deeper life, deeper life, deeper life. There are a lot of dirty things under the carpet. Remove that carpet. Sweep that thing away and say, Lord, here am I. I come. Cleanse me. Forgive me. And then let him give you the grace to go and sin no more. That grace will come to your life. And the goodness of God will be visible in your life. And glory, glory, glory will come in Jesus' name. And the strength and the power, the vision, the determination to live in righteousness, the Lord will confirm that in your life. And if you repented sincerely, if you turn the way from every secret act, tell the Lord, I believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. The faith you have in him changes your life takes all the disgraceful things away and it gives you the forgiveness, the redemption, the salvation and you know, praise the Lord, I am saved. The change, the transformation, the life of the new creature is in your life and now you're no more a slave to the bullies. A slave to the people that want to take holiness and righteousness away from your life. You're no more under the captivity of the slave traders. Say, Lord, I belong to you now. You believe in the Son of God and it sets you free. And the Spirit of God bears witness in your heart that now you are a child of God. The Lord confirm that in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let everybody rise up now. Everybody, everybody, everybody rising up. It's brought all things that pertain to life and godliness. And it's come to remove anything that keeps us down. Any sickness, any infirmity that keeps us down. It's come to take everything away. It'll take away from your life in Jesus' name. What he has done for other people who truly, really, wholeheartedly believe on him, he will do for everyone. Yeah. And you know, when we're sincere before the Lord, we don't have to do Rick Marol, we don't have to go here and go there and uh, wonder what will happen. Wonders will happen, yeah. miracles will happen, yeah. healing will happen. Yeah. Deliverance will happen. I'm going to pray for you now. If you want to raise your hand, okay. If you just want to lay your hand upon yourself, okay. God does it in various ways. And he loves you and he's going to heal you and deliver you wherever you are. We're we'll praying now. And after the prayer, remember that at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Cancer will bow. Ulcer will bow. And all those, uh, you know, evil things walking about in the body, they cannot remain there. They will bow in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord of glory, Lord of power, the kingdom is yours, and the power is yours, and the glory is yours. I pray, Lord, in your glory, in your power. 
come upon everyone and deliver them from every affliction in Jesus name I pray Lord whatever the form of sickness the Lord touch you right now the Lord touch you right now and take everything away in Jesus name John said to Jesus, it's two, two of his uh, followers asked him, are you the one to come or do we look for another? And he came to Jesus and they said, John sent us. Are you the one to come? Do we look for another? And at that hour, Jesus healed the sick. At that hour, he opened the eyes of the blind. At that hour, he made the lame to walk. He said, go back to John and tell him what things you hear and what things you see. Lord, at this hour, at this moment, heal the people who are sick. Open the blind eyes of those who are blind and make strength, power to come in their joints for the lame to rise up and walk in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every oppression of the devil, every attack of the devil, touch them now, transform them now, and perform your healing miracle upon everyone, your deliverance miracle upon everyone. Cancel that long standing sickness and bring total healing, perfect healing, sound health unto everyone right now. Lord, confirm it now. Lord, confirm it now. Lord, confirm it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord has answered the prayer. Shake up.